This video is brought to you by my supporters on Patreon, Buy Me Coffee, and YouTube. If you'd like to support me, you can find the links below. When you log on to the internet or social media from any part of India, one of the ideas you get bombarded with is how certain scientists were greatly inspired or spoke greatly about Hinduism. Is that really the case? Oh great, another video about how Hinduism is bad. Don't you have anything else to do with your time? Oh great, another typical misrepresentation of my argument just so it's easier to hate me. Look. I have no problem which religion you choose to follow. I'm just showing you examples of people who are outright lying to you by distorting facts. I'll talk a little more about this as the video goes on. Any misrepresentation of science is what I debunk on this channel. These claims of scientists who love the religion is part of a bigger idea of how Hinduism is greatly compatible with science. We're going to take a look at four scientists, Oppenheimer, Carl Sagan, Schrodinger, and Heisenberg and what they said. Hi, my name is Pranav. You're watching Sciences Dope. Let's begin. Let's start with Julius Robert Oppenheimer, known as the father of the atomic bomb for his crucial role in the Manhattan Project. It developed the nuclear bombs that were used by the US in World War II. Of course, you know all that, especially now that Christopher Nolan's new movie Oppenheimer is out. When he witnessed the testing of the first ever atomic bomb blast, the awe he felt while watching the explosion, he described by quoting a few lines from the Bhagavad Gita. Let's hear him say it. I remembered the line from the Hindu scripture, the Bhagavad Gita. Vishnu is trying to persuade the prince that he should do his duty. And to impress him, takes on his multi-armed form and says, Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. I suppose we all thought that. This quote is really famous and it's easy to see why. It's very poetic, it's from a religious text and it's describing an event that was very significant in history. A lot of people find this very beautiful. They see a poetic metaphor that's very captivating and aptly used. And personally, I find the poetry of the quote also very beautiful. But there are some people who take this quote as something that makes Hinduism special. When this is nothing more than a person using a religious metaphor to describe the awe he felt. There are a few like Sadhguru Jaggi Vasudev who associate this with the conspiracy theory of nuclear weapons that were used at the time of Mahabharata and Ramayana. You will see in Puranas, Mahabharata and Ramayana comes under the Purana culture. You will see vivid description of weapons which resemble today's modern weapons. They couldn't have just made up something which did not exist, the concept of it which did not exist a few hundred years ago. Yeah, Sadhguru, have you ever heard of fiction? Have you ever heard of books like H.G. Wells' First Men in the Moon or Jules Verne's 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea? Both of which talk about technologies that did not exist at the time those books were written but exist today. H.G. Wells also wrote The Time Machine and we have TV shows like The Expanse, both of which feature technologies that we don't have today. But if we were to have those technologies one day, are we gonna come back and point at these and say, hey, these technologies were mentioned here first, they must get credit. Another thing is that nuclear radioactive material sometimes takes thousands or millions of years to decay. If it were true that we had nuclear or radioactive bombs back then, then we'd be able to detect evidence for that. Like a spike in the amounts of radioactive carbon-14 in organic material like thousand plus year old trees, etc. But no such evidence has been found. Once again, I'm not saying that nuclear bombs did not exist back then. I'm saying that if they did, then we have no evidence for them today. 
and without evidence it just becomes a baseless claim but even if this nuclear weapons theory makes hinduism special then you have to acknowledge that the big bang theory makes christianity special because one it's consistent with the idea that the universe was created because it says that the observable universe came from a single point meaning space and time have a clear beginning and two the theory itself was first proposed by a catholic priest and many Christians use this idea to show how special their religion is. But those Christians are clearly wrong and they're just rationalizing. So does not mean so are these Hindus? Feel free to disagree with me and let me know why in the comments below. But before you do, ask yourself this. Is this quote what makes Hinduism special? Or was it already special in their eyes before they came across this quote and started using it as a post hoc rationalization? Carl Sagan is by far the most impactful science communicator that I know. And I often use words that he has said on this channel. Being an atheist and a staunch rationalist himself, it's very surprising to hear claims of how he regarded Hinduism as the greatest among religions. The entire claim comes from this clip. It is the only religion in which the time scales correspond, no doubt by accident, to those of modern scientific cosmology. Wow, those are some strong words, Carl Sagan. But I'll leave the link to the full video down below. When you watch it, you'll realize how it's the most rational and skeptical video out there on how uh, primitive human civilizations regarded the universe. It talks about how instead of answering the question of how the universe was created or was it created at all with God or whatever origin stories or cultural myths, etc. Just say, I don't know when you don't have enough evidence to conclude something. So out of that entire video, when you take this tiny section and parade it around saying, hey, look at this, Carl Sagan says Hinduism is scientific. Just imagine how dishonest that actually is. What can I say? There are people that want to disinform you on the internet. And most people won't bother to look at the context and just end up believing whatever they're told. So let's look at what's actually being said. He describes how myths of Hinduism have time scales that are comparable with those observed by modern science, that is billions of years. And compare that with other popular religions like Christianity and Islam with the age of their universe is in the order of thousands of years. But wait, before anyone calls their blind followers and starts celebrating, let's look at that clip again. There is a phrase that he says that completely invalidates the claim that Carl Sagan says Hinduism is scientific. See if you can spot it. It is the only religion in which the time scales correspond, no doubt by accident, to those of modern scientific cosmology. No doubt by accident. Heard that Hindu mythology has such time scales, no doubt by accident. He says it's a complete coincidence that the time scales are similar. And even if you grant that the ancient Hindus knew these things about the universe, the thing they said about the universe having birth and death cycles, none of these things are confirmed by modern science. And Carl Sagan doesn't say that in the video either. And so with no evidence to base this on, all it is is just a metaphor. By the way, how was Carl Sagan so confident that it was an accident? Because he and anyone who's learned basic science would know, knowledge doesn't come magically. Nobody can meditate for years and hope to understand anything about reality. Unlike what Sadhguru says. He sat there with his eyes closed and saw that if you go deep enough into this, there is an evolutionary memory in this. Empirical knowledge, that is our understanding of reality, comes as a result of examining evidence. This age of the universe that science has found out comes purely from evidence, such as by looking at the rate of expansion of the universe. All of these require complex instruments and measurement capabilities. And people back then didn't have them. If you think they did, then just ask yourself, are you concluding this based on evidence or is it just wishful thinking? Irwin Schrodinger, a Nobel Prize winning Austrian physicist 
who came up with the Schrodinger equation, one of the core ideas in quantum mechanics has also been used as a scapegoat by many Hindu nationalist blogs in their attempt to make Hinduism look superior. He has a quote that goes something like, it has been said that there is only one consciousness as per Vedanta. There is no multiplicity of selves. What is the science in this quote? I mean, if anyone knows, please let me know in the comments. But I have a suspicion that these nationalist blogs aren't really looking for science. They just want a famous scientist to have said something about their religion or their scriptures. Like this quote by Niels Bohr or Werner Heisenberg. I tried looking for an elaboration on that last quote, but I couldn't find anything. But it looks to me like he saw some resemblance somewhere and made a quote. This doesn't mean anything, but that's all someone needs if they're trying to find whatever they can to associate, to try and associate Hinduism with science. They just need a famous scientist to say something about Hinduism. Then they can just appeal to the authority of the scientist to make whatever claims they want. The kind of stuff they write is sometimes hilarious. Carl Sagan never came for studying the scriptures. These are just baseless, exaggerated claims. I'm not sure if they understand that it's not one person's opinion or a quote that makes something true. This is a logical fallacy because in science we need consensus. That is an agreement from multiple experts before an idea gets accepted in the field. There is no consensus in science that says there are cycles of creation and destruction of the universe. For anyone who feels like I'm going out of my way to disassociate Hinduism from science, have you thought of the opposite? that these people who want you to believe these ideas are going out of their way to find rationalizations to associate Hinduism with science. I've seen way too many examples of this to think that this isn't the case. And each time I see it, I think the massive amount of insecurity someone must have about their religion or community to actually make up stuff and be like, hey, look at my religion, look at how cool and awesome it is. The unfortunate thing is that many people come across ideas like these online and start believing it's true. The internet is full of sites like these. This whole page is a word salad that beats around the bush without telling us specifically what parts of the Vedas tell us what about quantum mechanics. Apparently, when these scientists read it, they were able to decode it and find deep, hidden, empirical knowledge. If you believe that, then you're engaged in wishful thinking. I'll link the page below so you can read it yourself. To anyone who might read this kind of blog or website, don't fall into their trap. If someone wants to make themselves look stupid, then let them. But say to yourself, I'm not gonna let them get me to believe this. In summary, were these scientists inspired by Hinduism? Probably yes. Does that make Hinduism special? Absolutely not. If you like my content, feel free to support me using any of these options, links down below. I've been trying to run this channel without any sponsorships for a few months now and your support is what helps me. If you do choose to support me, then you might get your name displayed on the video like these wonderful people. If you like this video, you might also like this one where I talk about the claim that evolution was described in Hinduism long back. I'll see you in the next one. Till then, remember, science is dope.